Taylor of Jefferson County is the new Indiana Corn Champion with an official yield of 762.65 bushels on five acres. An average of 152.53 bushels an acre. He tells in this article the methods that he employed to produce this remarkable yield in a season none too favorable for corn. Let Mr. Ayler tell you in his own words. I live in Jefferson County, Indiana, just below Manville, a little town about 10 miles southeast of Madison. Seven years ago, I came from Carroll County, Kentucky, and bought my farm consisting of 135 acres, part of which is ridgeland. There are about 55 acres of bottom land, 30 of which overflow nearly every year. The Indian Kentucky River runs right through my farm, and as I say, it's up over part of my land. One thing though, I want to make clear is that my five acre plot is not overflow land. A lot of people think that we growers in Jefferson County win high records because we have overflow ground. But this prize winning plot has been covered with water only once, and that was in 1913, the year of the big flood. So much for my ground. Now I'll tell you how I handled it. Last year, 1926, this 15 acre field was in tobacco and was broken from clover. At that time, I hauled out 20 loads of manure to the acre and put on 400 pounds of high grade fertilizer. The tobacco was big and tall, but in August, a windstorm blew it down so badly that I cut only 700 sticks and plowed the rest down. Of course, I think this had a tendency to help my corn this year, as tobacco is rich in certain plant foods. I rebroke the field in April of 27, plowing it six inches deep with a riding plow, then disc it three times with a harrow, rolled it twice, and pulled a heavy drag over it to mash the clods and then ran over it with a 62 harrow. After I was satisfied with the condition of the seed bed, I broadcast 250 pounds of Red Star per acre using a wheat drill. The planting date was June 7th. The seed I used is a yellow dent, big ears and deep kernels. There is no real name for it, but it is a variety that I've been planting and selecting for several years. My rows were 34 inches apart, and the corn was dropped 8 inches in the row. I really had my drill set for 12 inch planting, but it got 8 inches. I believe generally that this is too thick, but my ground was naturally productive and could stand closer planting. Then, too, we had plenty of rain to furnish moisture. According to M. O. Pintz of the Department of Agricultural Extension of Purdue University, climatic conditions during the year 1927 were among the most unfavorable experienced by Indiana corn growers. Excessive rainfall during the spring and early summer followed by low temperatures during the late summer resulted in late planting, poor stands, and late maturing corn, which was generally of poor quality. End of quote. You should always remember that a corn crop usually pays and pays well in good as well as poor seasons. To plan ahead for the corn crop and use those methods and practices which have been tested out and found trustworthy.